What's up everyone, Josh Kingsley here, your host for All Things Control by Eaton. There are over 80 kinds of push buttons with different sizes and different functions. So how in the world do you pick the one that's right for you? Well, in today's episode, we're gonna talk about just how you select the right push button for your application. Let's start understanding push buttons. In today's world, a single machine often performs multiple functions. Humans control the machine, initiating changes based on the work assignments or advancing machine to the next step of the process. And this is where the push button comes in. Through push buttons, workers can interact with the machine's operation. The term push button is used to refer to two different things actually. The first is a specific type of button assembly that you actually push on a panel. And the second is a general group of components in mechanical man slash machine interface products, which includes indicating lights, selector switches, potentiometers, and push buttons by which people interact with the machines. The first thing to consider is the size or diameter of the button that you are looking for. Typically, a 22 millimeter push button is used in light industrial applications such as machine building, panels, material handling and conveyors. Whereas 30 millimeter push buttons are usually a better fit for your heavy industrial applications. And here we're talking about oil and gas production, water and wastewater process, industrial equipment, or chemical plants, for example. The next thing that we consider is style. Push button families come in several styles and can be selected to complement the design of your machine. They usually come with either silver or black bezels, which are the colors surrounding the operator. Another style option is flush mount, which is gonna allow the button to blend into the surface of the machine or surface mount in which the button stands off the uh, surface of the machine. Next, you need to select the operator type. Like I said before, there are just over 80 types of push buttons. The reason there are so many is because each style provides a specific answer to a field problem. We can categorize these styles into the following buckets. Extended, where an exposed button raised further off the panel than the other buttons. This is often used for the machine's most important function, such as stop. Flush, this is gonna be where the button is flush with the housing. Direct pressure must be applied to actuate the flush push buttons. They are not easily bumped into and they won't change state. Often these are used as a start button. Selector switches. These are used when more than one control option is needed, such as a handoff auto. And uh, selector switches are usually the preferred push button when a maintained contact is needed. Guarded. These take prevention of unwanted operation one step further than the flush push buttons by having a metal guard around the actuator portion of the button. Mushroom and jumbo mushroom. These are most often used for stop and emergency stop buttons. Very easy to actuate because they have a very, very big target. Push pull operators. These must be physically pushed in or pulled out to change the position status. Two position maintained contacts would be start, stop, or up, down. And then three position maintained or momentary for start, stop, run, or handoff auto functions. <clears throat> Need some water. <clears throat> Bear with me. <clears throat> Jump back into it. Twist to release. These are maintain contact push buttons that you push in, but then you have to twist to release. It's often used for stop and emergency stop, and the extra effort is needed to make that twist uh, to restart the machine forces, forces a more active decision on the part of the worker. Key release. These are maintain contact push buttons that you push in and need a key to release. These are often used for safety reasons. For example, you'll be able to lock a machine off during the maintenance. Illuminated push button lens. Now this is gonna save space and money by combining the function of both a push button and an indicating light. Even though the button contains both, an operator and the light, these are actually separate items that have to be wired separately inside the assembly. For example, 
The push button might connect to the starter, while the light is wired to a microchip that reads that the engine is running. Potentiometer. These are often used for speed control because turning the dial uh, varies the resistant or ohms in electrical speak. Joystick. Mounts in a standard hole size, although the space must be left on the panel for the lever action. Because the joystick extends outwards and often corresponds with the direction of movement sought, it's easy and intuitive to use. Roto push. This is a combination of a selector switch and a push button in one unit. The outer guard of the push button rotates in two or more positions and provides different contact actions when the push button is either free or pushed in at each selector position. <sighs> this is exhaustive, right? <clears throat> But I really, really do hope that this has helped you determine which push button is gonna work for you. And now that you've learned a little bit more about control, let me tell you about an exciting new offer. For a limited time only, your distributor is offering special pricing on select push buttons and power supplies. Take advantage of this offer while stocks last. Contact your distributor now for more details. And thanks for watching this episode of All Things Control, where we invite you to keep it in control.